Hey everyone, it's Bethany and I am working on creating a bathroom word search sign and I'm really excited because I've been wanting to do this for quite some time and I finally am getting around to it. The reason I, it has taken me a while to do this is because I was trying to find the perfect um, little frame to put it on and I finally found something that I really like so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be placing my design on here with iron on. Now I did place some paint on here and I'll tell you why it actually came painted but it actually um, was this board on the um, bottom was flipped the other way but when it came to me again I bought it online it had an obvious little I don't know little mark on it um, that really did not make me a happy camper when I opened it up because um, I wasn't very happy to see that on there but I noticed they have the little prongs so I was easily able, easily able to remove that was a tongue twister remove this and I painted the back side of it and then I put the back side in here so I think it was about three coats of chalk paint and then I did a um, sand down on it with my electric sander just to make sure it was all nice and smooth for the iron on. Um, so that is, um, I painted that probably a week to two weeks ago. So it is very, very good and dry. So what we're going to do again, we're going to use this black um, everyday iron on. I have my weeding tool and a measuring tape. So I'll measure out my design here and it looks like I'm just going to measure the insides and we have about let's see 14 and a half inches by 22 and a half inches so we'll go ahead and hop into design space i will show you the pre-made design that we're going to use and i'll also place a link down in the description box below in case you want to recreate this look yourself then you'll know where you can buy this svg and i'm just making this for personal use for our guest bath so let's go ahead and get started Okay, so this is the SVG we're going to be using. I think it's so cute, and it's going to hang in our bathroom, so I love it. I think it's going to be fun. Again, it's going to go in our guest bath, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of editing on this. The only thing that I don't really like is I don't like the font on word list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my um, layers panel, and I am going to find the word and list, and I'm going to grab those, and then I'm just going to delete them from my design. And I'm going to come up to text. I am going to use the text Don Juan. I think it'll look good here. So this is the text right here. It's called Don Juan. And I am going to type in word list. And then I can just size this down and place it right back on the design. So it's a nice way to edit and get a design exactly how you want it to look. So that looks good to me. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I want all of this, if you can notice, some of it is in gray. Um, I am only going to do black on this. I'm going to do just do one color. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to grab all of my design, the whole thing, and I'm going to come down here and weld it. Right now, there are so many layers that make up this file, but I'm going to weld it so everything cuts in the exact place that it is on this design. So I'm going to come here, click weld and now you'll see over on the right side in the layers panel that everything is in one spot. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square and I just grabbed this from over here and I will redo it for you. So you just come over to the shapes box, grab a square and I am going to make this the size of my sign. So I believe it was 14 and a half by 22 and a half. So we'll go ahead and size that down so we can really see it. And the sign is going to be white. And now I'm going to grab my design, right click and say move forward. That way it'll go right on my sign here. And this is just going to help me measure out my design so I know how big I want it. So I am going to make it... And it looks like I'm going to have to grab a 12 by 24 mat, obviously, for this. Now you can monitor, once you have your machine selected, you can monitor over here. If you get a alert, let's see if I make this bigger, you'll get a triangle alert that says it is too large. So it's going to let you know, if you click on it, it says image is too large, reduce it, and it'll give you the parameters. So for our width, we want to stay below or at 11 and a half. And for our height, we'll have to stay at 23 and a half, which is just perfect. So we will size that down to 11 and a half. That looks good. 
and I think that looks really nice actually. So we, I'm going to lock that. I'm, it, the final measurements are 11 and a half by 19.2. So that looks really, really good. So I'm just going to unclick there and make sure that I like, it looks like we have really nice spacing around the entire edge. In fact, what I can do is just make this a tad longer, just so everything is even. Okay. I like how that looks. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this rectangle behind it because we don't need the Cricut cutting out a rectangle. And then I'm going to go ahead and click make it. Okay, so it's reminding us that we're going to need our larger mat. So we are going to say okay. Again, 12 by 24 mat is called for over here. We're going to mirror the image because we are working with iron-on and we're going to say continue. Now we're gonna select everyday iron-on as our material. We'll get our material loaded and get cutting. Over on the heat guide, I'm using my Cricut Easy Press 2. We will use Everyday Iron On for our material. Then we will select our base material, which is wood, and we'll use an Easy Press mat and click Apply. So our temperature is going to be 300 degrees for 40 seconds. It says firm pressure and cool peel. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm just placing my iron on right on my mat here and Getting it all nice and smooth. Now, again, I did do shiny side face down on the mat. So if you can see that, there's an obvious shiny side. That will go face down on the mat. And I'm just rolling this out nicely down my 12 by 24 mat. So I'm going to use my brayer tool just to make sure everything is laying really nice and flat. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and open up our machine. We'll go ahead and load our mat and we'll get to cutting. And I'll time this for you to see how long this takes to cut. So again, we're just going to make sure that that is even there and then load our mat. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and press the Cricut button to get it cutting. Okay, so it's just finishing up the cut and it took just about 35 minutes on the dot. So make sure you have something else to work on. Make sure you have some coffee because that takes quite a while to do. Okay, so now it's going to unload and we'll be ready to start weeding this out. Okay, it looks really cool. Okay, so it's actually pretty fun to monitor as you um, are watching it cut. And one of the things that makes um, it always confuses me is the Cricut cuts in like random order. So it'll do like a letter over here and then it'll do a letter over here. And it kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat because you're just thinking, what the heck are you doing? And then you're wondering what's going to happen next. Okay. So I'm just going to go upside down and bend the mat away from the design and the iron on. And we will start weeding this out. So it's going to look really cool, I think. So you can do this with, um, you can do this with adhesive vinyl as well. So I will explain why I decided to do iron on. So the first reason is because I'm putting this in a bathroom and bathrooms tend to get a lot of moisture because of showering and all that stuff. So I wanted to have something that was going to stand up to um, all of that moisture a little bit better. And then the other reason is I think iron on is so much easier to lay down and straighten than adhesive vinyl. So if you decide to do adhesive vinyl with this, I would phone a friend and have them help you lay it down because when you see the part coming up where we are going to lay this down on the sign, um, you'll see how easy it is to um, do with iron on because you can just lay it down and pick it back up. But with adhesive vinyl, you have pretty much one shot at it. So if you do adhesive vinyl, it's totally doable. Just ask for some help so that you have a couple sets of hands working on it. Okay, so now I think this is going to be very gratifying to weed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weed this entire design. In fact, I think I might actually put this, now that I have it cut down, I might put this back on the mat so that I have a little bit of stick and it won't keep rolling up on me. Okay, so I'm just gonna place this right down here. That way it just stays nice and flat for me. Okay, so now I'm just going to start weeding out all of the areas that need to come out. I love the border 
on this design. I think it makes it look really sleek. I think it's going to be so neat. So this is going to be a weeding project that you need to get some really good music on for or maybe your favorite show. <laughs> Something to do while you do it because it's going to take a little bit but this is so much easier. Another reason why iron-on is a good idea for this particular design is because this is so much easier to weed than um, adhesive vinyl. So it's very forgiving and pretty easy to do. Okay, so I'm still working on just removing the back and while iron-on is forgiving, you also do want to just take your time and make sure you're not peeling up anything that needs to stay part of your design. Okay, so we have the first layer done and I think we have all of our <laughs> letters on there. It looks like we do. So I'm just going to come through now and start doing the middle part of this. I like to weed though, so when I saw this design, um, I was equally excited because I didn't have to create this on my own because that would have been doable but very daunting. But also, um, I was excited. Do you ever look at a design and think, oh, I can't wait to weed that? I hope I'm not the only one, so asking for a friend here. Make sure you let me know if you have done that before. Okay, so now I'm just going line by line and I am looking for all of the little middles to the letters. So the A's and the O's and the B's and the Q's, all of those that have little middle pieces, R's. I'm just going through line by line. That way I ensure that I don't miss anything and making sure everything is weeded out. Have any of you ever created a word search before? I actually have and um, I did it when I was younger and I did it for our like family reunion that we had and um, we have a very very big family so there were oh my goodness I can't even tell you how many names there were but it was such a task to do and I did everybody's names in this word search and I can tell you that's the first and last time I've ever made one from scratch because it was really difficult it was fun but um obviously not fun enough for me to have done it again in all these years since I've done it but it, if you haven't done it it's kind of neat and it, they're really fun to to do but um I was glad that I found something like this because it's already pre-done and the fonts are really cool so okay so at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my easy press is preheated so I'm going to turn it on let me see if I can get it right in the screen here so I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to set it to 300 and it's going to go for 40 seconds. So we'll let that preheat while we finish up this little weeping. Okay, I think I did it. And oh, wow, the timing was perfect. Okay, so I'm just making sure I don't have any pieces left over as well. Um, so I'm gonna clean all of this off and then I'm gonna place this on my board and then I will double check to make sure I have all of my pieces weeded out. I think it'll just be easier once I see it on white to really double check everything. Okay, so I have my easy press mat right under here. So I'm just placing my sign on the first half and I'm gonna do this in um, two separate little presses. So what I'm gonna do here first is preheat the wood. I'm going to grab a piece of parchment paper and I'm just gonna do this just so I'm really careful because I'm using painted wood. So I'm just gonna do this to protect the wood, just give myself an extra little barrier. And it looks like I am going to preheat for, let's see, is it five seconds? Yeah, five seconds. So I will just grab my press and I'm going to place it right on my board and preheat for about five seconds. Okay, and then I'm just gonna move it and keep preheating. 
Okay, so now that it's preheated, what I'm going to do is remove the parchment paper and grab my design here. Oh, that looks really neat. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so now I'm going to, now that I can see a lot of contrast, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scan through and make sure everything found tissue. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I find uh, if there's any areas that have anything that need to be weeded out. So I like to scan with either my weeding tool or my finger and making sure everything's spelled correctly. And that's not for checking the design, but more just to check that I didn't accidentally weed up any letters that I needed to keep down. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, so now I'm just going to get on, uh, get to centering this. So one thing about centering is you can place it where you want it, then you can pick it up and go set it on the wall or set it in front of you and see if it looks good. Okay, so this looks really good to my eye. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just go line by line here. So I'm going to grab my piece of parchment paper and set it right on top. Again, I'm just doing this as an extra precaution just because I'm a little nervous. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my press and I'm not going to move it at all. You don't want to move this. So I'm going to place it on my design. Make sure it fits. And I have the 12 by, is it 10 by 12? So, and my design is 11 and a half, so it should be good. And then it said firm pressure. So I'm just going to place a, a palm right on there and make sure I give it some firm pressure without moving it at all. Okay, so that was 40 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and remove my press and then I am going to make sure that I shift my mat underneath to the next portion and I'm going to press. You could also use the mini easy press for this and I considered it but I just thought that this would be a little faster so the mini you can also use um, to do this project. Okay, and then once again, just moving my mat underneath to match where I'm pressing and the final press. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. I will remove my parchment paper. Looks good so far. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the heat mat from underneath because this is a cool peel and I want to make sure that this cools down completely before we remove the carrier sheet. Okay, so it has completely cooled. So what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing a little piece of my carrier sheet with some tweezers to peel it up and it did take quite a while to cool. So you want to make sure it's completely cool before you peel it up. Um, so what I did was I just sat here and tried to find all the words in the word search. <laughs> it's a good use of time. So I'm going to peel at an angle and monitor my areas. Looks like there's a little area down here that I need to repress a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to grab my parchment paper and I'll grab my heat mat and just there's a couple areas that were looking like they wanted to pull up. So put our heat mat right back under here and repress it just for maybe half the time. And that could have been just me not quite getting the press all the way to the um, end. So it could have just been a positioning thing, but you'll just want to monitor and make sure everything is laying down as it should. And now we'll have to wait for that to cool again before we get that peeled up. So just to use the best use of my time, what I'll do is I'll just do like 20 seconds on that, those areas. Um, just one more time, just to make sure that everything else gets a little bit of an extra press. Okay. So I'll let this cool once again and also what you could do is you could if you have a mini as well is you could just go through with your mini on any little areas that are pulling up um, and you could do that as well okay so this is definitely cool now because I had to go do something different for a little bit so I left this cooling for oh gosh probably 45 minutes so I'm just going to peel 
make sure everything now is really down. And there were a couple places that I had to go and and re-press, but with a design this big, it's kind of bound to happen. And it probably might have been me um, accidentally not getting you know the press perfectly in one spot. But it looks really good. So I'm just again still monitoring. The trick here is um, firm pressure with your press and the other trick is make sure it's completely cool when you peel because if you try to peel this warm the HTV or iron on is going to come up right with the sheet. So make sure you keep this in case you need to repress but if you notice that everything is down then you can toss it. So you'll just want to just double check that you keep this until everything is good to go. But it looks great. I love how this turned out. I think it turned out really really, really pretty. I'm excited to hang it up. I think it'll be a fun little um, something for our little master or no our guest bathroom I guess it is. Um, and I think it'll be fun. I think people will really enjoy it. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you thought this turned out really really cute. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys all in the next video.